Hello, hello. Welcome back to Umbrella Arts Academy. I'm Shana Searcy, and today we're going to be painting this fabulous Northern Lights landscape. To go over a few of our materials today, I'll be using my Princeton Aqua Elite size 6 and size 12 brushes, as well as Arsh 140 pound cold press paper. Any 100% cotton paper will do for this heavy layer, heavy water project. I'll also be using Payne's Gray, Phthalo Green, Carbon Black, and Cobalt Blue, colors from the Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus line, as well as, we can't forget the Bleed Proof White is going to be important for those fabulous stars at the end of the painting. So let's get started. I've taped down my paper. Um, this is really important for this really water heavy project to constrain it to a board of some kind. And I'm going to thoroughly wet um, the paper and I want it to be damp all the way around in a nice even layer, uh, but without any puddles on the paper. And this is going to allow our paint to travel nicely and smoothly between transitions of colors. Like I said, this is a layer heavy project. So this is going to be layer one of at least five on the background. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lay in my lightest and brightest color, which is phthalo green. And this is gonna build the shape of the lights that I want. So I've done this project many times and they all look very different and it all depends on the shape that I start with, whether it's a zigzag across the sky or these big bright beams from one focal point, it can really change and vary um, as you like. So now I'm layering in my medium value paint or color, which is the cobalt blue, and I'm putting this in the negative space in between the um, the brightest color which are going to be our actual lights and then i'm also going to add another layer of Payne's gray which is just another darker deeper value and later you'll see we incorporate our carbon black okay so i'm going to let this layer dry and then i'm going to re-wet it and i'm going to add my second layer so it's important to make sure to let your layers dry between, re-wet them, and then add another layer. Um, otherwise, as your paper starts to dry, if it dries in certain areas and you're still working on another area that's wet, you'll start to get these really funky blooms and cauliflower kind of effects, which sometimes you're trying for that, but um, in this one, we're gonna to try to keep our transitions really smooth between colors so we get that velvety night sky look. So you can see here, I'm actually going in with a clean brush that's just damp. It really doesn't have a lot of water on it at all. I've cleaned it out in the water and then I've blotted it off on my paper towel and I'm running it between the strips of color that I've laid down, so between that green and between the blue to smooth out the transition. And I've just dropped in a little more phthalo green for my second layer. And again, I'm smoothing out those edges as I let them bleed into each other and let the paint travel. But then I'll go in with clean, a clean brush, a very damp but not super wet clean brush and smooth out the layers in between. Okay, moving on to layer three. So remember, I let that dry. I did cut that part out, although this is a real-time painting. I did cut out the drying time in between. So you can pause on the video while you dry your painting between layers. So moving on to layer three, I'm laying in more dark panes gray into my negative space area between the beams of light. And on this layer in particular, I'm going to start adding in some quick um, vertical upstrokes just randomly kind of throughout the piece. And this gives another texture of kind of these light rays reflecting up off of the northern light. So you're going to see me adding those in. Um, I really don't have a rhyme or reason in particular why I do it. Sometimes I do find that I have one that turns out a little darker than I intended to. Um, and I'll just go in and soften it up. 
but it's a clean brush, sometimes with just a little bit of water on it or a little dampness, and I'm just using the paint that's already on the paper and pulling that up or down um, kind of through the piece. And I did notice that some of those lines just came out a little bit strong for me. So I'm just going in with a damp brush because the piece is still wet and just softening them up a little bit, pulling up a little bit of the color or blending it out. So no need to fret if you have one that's too strong in there, just go back with that process to soften. Okay, once again, I'm gonna let that layer completely dry and then I'm gonna go back again and re-wet the entire painting in order to add in layer number four. And on this layer, I'm gonna be concentrating very specifically on the dark negative space areas and really trying to deepen those in color with some more paints, gray, cobalt blue, and um, going to introduce carbon black on this layer as well. So you should be able to see that, keep an eye out for that. So all my supplies are linked in the description. I know I introduced you to them at the beginning of this video, but if you need a refresher or are looking for um, links to these specific materials, you can find my brushes, the paint colors, as well as um, the paper um, in the description, either in the YouTube video or on Facebook, wherever you're finding this particular tutorial video. So here comes the carbon black. You can see this is really gonna start to deepen and darken those areas. And the darker our negative space goes, the brighter our light beams or the positive space that phthalo blue and cobalt blue areas start to become. And I'm staying with the general shape that I first started with, but you can see I'm making some minor adjustments as I go. And I did find that this bottom section got a little too low to the bottom of the painting of where I'm going to eventually lay in the mountains. Um, so I just used a little kitchen paper, a little paper towel, and blotted a little bit of that up. It's totally fine that some of that area has a little paint in it still. I'm not worried about that because we're gonna put a dark color at the top there. And my next step, my next um, step in this, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to start working in the mountain range at the bottom where you can see I've left it um, pretty white. So we're gonna let that dry while I lay in these mountains. And basically I'm gonna follow this leading line across the top of the mountain ridge. And I'm gonna use these short kind of choppy strokes with the side or the belly of my brush right along that line at a slanted angle, giving the suggestion of the face or faces of this mountain ridge. And I'm laying that in with a mix of Payne's gray and cobalt blue. So it's just a slightly different um, color but using the colors from the sky um, than we've used before. And then I'm just taking a little bit of water on my brush and barely touching the bottom of the area where I laid in paint and blending that out. And you can see I have a much lighter color um, as I blend it out, giving that mountain range some texture and depth and variation. And we're gonna let it all dry once again. And isn't it crazy how light those layers get in between drying periods and times, especially when we don't see it gradually and I cut that drying time out and you see it all in one shift. So normally I would be done with the sky by the time I put the mountains in, but here I just felt like, ugh, I really need to put in one more layer to deepen that color and I'm gonna go really dramatically with this carbon black over top of the panes gray and cobalt blue I've already laid in because I feel like it really just needs that that deep darkness and I'm going to go back through with my other colors too my phthalo green and just lay in a nice thick layer of that and a little bit a little bit of cobalt blue too to add um, some beautiful color variation to the sky and I'm gonna let that bleed and dry um, after I blend them together a little bit. 
and I'm using these upstrokes with a clean brush. So I'm going through rinsing my brush off, making sure it's not really wet, just a little bit damp. And now I'm going back with my smaller number six brush and using some of those um, vertical um, lines through the piece that I'm going to let bleed and dry, but it gives a suggestion of these light beams coming up. And here we go, one more round of drying. And then lastly, I'm going to add on this details to the mountain ridge. So one more layer of carbon black on top of the mountain ridge towards the top, and I'll blend it out a little bit again and let that dry completely. And then we are going to move on to our last step, which is the bleed proof white, which is super exciting. It really brings the whole thing together and makes all of the colors kind of pop. Okay, a little shameless plug time. Wherever you are finding this video on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I love hearing from those joining me for these video tutorials. Okay, so now back into our painting. Okay, finishing up these final details in the mountains, we are gonna move on to bleed proof white. So exciting, where we're also gonna use a toothbrush, what I I did not show you earlier on, but it is a tool that you should have readily available or a hard bristled brush of any kind. And then you're going to water down your bleed proof white. Um, you only need a little bit, add a lot of water to it and dip your toothbrush or hard bristled brush into that. And then here I'm using a paper towel to cover up part of my painting that I do not want to have this star field on. Um, but I realized kind of halfway through it was creating this hard line. So I adjusted and decided to bring my stars kind of all the way down to the mountain ridge um, so that they had a more uniform look and they didn't have that hard line there. So I just get rid of the paper towel, cover up the mountains because we don't need stars on our mountains, but put them all throughout the sky. All right, now we're at the best part of any painting, which is peeling off that tape, revealing that nice clean border, and seeing our final results. Wow, that bleed proof white really does make the other colors pop. Those blacks look really deep and rich and black, and the phthalo green and cobalt blue are quite vibrant and rich. Thank you so much for painting this tutorial with me today. Uh, wherever you are finding this video, whether it's on YouTube, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook on, under Umbrella Arts Academy, like the page and join the group where you can share your own attempts at these projects. And also follow our account on Instagram, Umbrella Arts Academy. I'm Shana Searcy. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you again soon.